Here we go. I'm fine. <laughs> From chapter start. Here we go. How you doing, Sink? How's everyone else as well? Spoons, uh, Kid Boo. Oh yeah, it's 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 420 also <laughs> in this case. I forgot about that. Hey there, crazy old gamer. How you doing? Okay, 420, here we go. That's definitely a spelling mistake. Court. Well, <laughs> court and not coots. Court will now reconvene. Good, and you? Pretty good, pretty good. Doing pretty good on this uh, Wednesday night. Let's reconvene for coot. Has our witness, Miss Olga, really recovered? Y yes, your honor. Well, well uh, she's regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear a vision of the events again? That's the thing, you see. She's quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Mr. Payne. Sadly, fatigue is insufficient grounds for refusing to testify or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Mr. O'Reilly take the stand. Very well. The witness will take the stand. Hey there, Slayer. How you doing? Yeah, more Apollo Justice. Um... Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession? Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poorer loser? Nyt Not. I should have looked up how to do a Russian accent. What? Wait, is she not actually Russian? I should have just been doing my, a bad Russian accent the entire- that's kind of what I was doing. <laughs> Coot is in session. <laughs> Okay. Name's Olga O'Reilly. That's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quickfingers O'Reilly. Oh. Oh, oh, really? Want to know something else? I'm not really Russian, and my last name sounds like O'Reilly. There. That's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. We're in the Witness, you will tell the court what you were really up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan, see? Let me remind you that you are currently under oath. Yeah, oh really? This is a game from 2007, and there are so many memes in this game. Um, we were actually talking about the fact that... I was like, what other memes are from 2007? And, uh, Space Jam. The Space Jam... Popular this popularity of Space Jam as a meme started around that year as well. So I'm guessing there will be a reference to that in this game. <laughs> uh, you remember that somehow? Yeah! Okay, let us continue. <laughs> it was a little off topic, but I wanted to mention it because I found out since last stream. Um, any further fabrications will have serious consequences. Fine. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy, Smith, hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Borscht Bowl Club several days prior to the night of the game. As a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim? Not that he needed my help. Smith is a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend, the unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then dealt five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card and tra the trap would snap shut. Oh, hey, Wintermute! Um, she looks different. Yep, she took off her disguise. And revealed that she wasn't Russian. <laughs> Uh... You swap the cards! Exposes a cheater and losing on top of it. It would have made a great double play. 
Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Indeed. Getting caught red-handed at cheating would cast doubt on all of his prior wins. A seven-year legend destroyed by one little card. That was the plan. Oh, really? Oh, really? How droll. But it appears you made quite the mistake. A mistake? I agree, the trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right! He's lucky, I'll give him that. You'd have to be to slip free from a trap laid by Olga Quick Fingers O'Reilly. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dispensed with the evil mastermind shtick. What the fuck, Judge? Are you serious? <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Cute? Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad, you hear me? BAD! When you're through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court? Tell us about this trap and how it was sprung. Narration still on point. Thanks, with the fun man! <laughs> uh, okay, best laid traps. Here we go. That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then, Smith searched him. Look at how smug Phoenix Wright looks in that. <laughs> so smug. <laughs> but, the planted card was gone. The trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. That wasn't me who's hit Smith. It was the no-good, cheating defendant. <laughs> uh, a surprisingly frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you, perfect. If that rotten cheater hadn't messed it up. Look who's talking. Well, the testimony, for what it's worth, is all yours, Mr. Justice. With witnesses like her, who needs criminals? And with defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? What is the legal system? <laughs> Ponders Apollo Justice while he digs his finger into his forehead. Okay. Best laid traps. Chocolate cheesecake? Fucking amazing. I love cheesecake. Oh yeah, I was gonna look into being able to actually yell. Hold it! Fuck. I forgot to check if that was possible. I need to write that down. I'm actually just gonna write that down, like, literally right now. For tomorrow. Thursday. Um... Look up being able to use mic in DS emulator. Okay. Good, good note. <laughs> Chocolate rice pudding. Oh, that sounds good too. Oh man, I love dessert. I had some blueberries right before stream started. Okay. Last night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. This planted card. Which card was it exactly? The trump card. The five of hearts. Let me guess. Mr. Wright was to have switched the five with the ace to make a full house. At least that's what you were going to accuse him of doing, thereby ruining his legend. I slid it into Wright's pocket. When was this? Why, before the match, of course, while he was eating. At the Borscht Bowl Club, we serve Borscht and suckers. Remind me to never go there. Of course, the card was to make its grand debut during the game. Like a good borscht, a good plot must be cooked up early and allowed to thicken. This is still, yeah, the tutorial level. It's a very long tutorial level. Compared to most games. It's like four hours <laughs> of content. Um, okay. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. Hold on, that was the first one, right? Okay. Where's- yeah, Plants hasn't been around in a while. 
We haven't had very many uh, punny, punny jokes recently. Um, I know he has a lot going on, but he is apparently doing well at the moment, but very busy. <laughs> um, I wonder where Spoon is. Spoon's, Spoon's is, he might actually be here. I know he was here at the beginning of the stream. Um, yeah. Let's let's press. Let's hold it. Hold it. Um, so everything went according to plan. Exactly. The fifth ace came up, so it's obvious the switch went off without a hitch. Once the extra card was found in his pocket, Wright would be forever known as a cheat and a fraud. Um, there are worse things to be known as, I suppose. Um, tell us what happened with the uh, wrong voice. Tell us what happened with the surge. Oh, VIP for a week. Oh, hey, okay, yeah, sure. I can do that. Slash VIP. There we go. Done. Let me mark that off. Uh, oh, there's a bunch of things I haven't marked as complete. There we go. Um, the IP is below sub. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, I guess. It, wait. Is it? No. Because what the fun man's a VIP and so is a s and also a sub. I see both icons. You just get that pink diamond. Yeah, no, you get both. You get both there. Um but the trap the ah the planted card was gone, the trap failed. There we go. The card disappeared? Yeah, my trump card, the five of hearts. Gone, without a trace, poof, Zippo. We searched every nook and cranny, even inside his cute little hat, his papa hat. But the card was nowhere to be found, is this correct? Never in my long storied career. Never has quick fingers, oh really, been so readily duped. Oh, really? So what did happen to the Five of Hearts? Don't look at me. Why don't you ask that cheating lion two-faced defendant? So the Five of Hearts is still missing in action? The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. Did he? Phoenix Wright? Um, wait, isn't that a little odd? What? what's odd? You searched Mr. Wright, uh, thoroughly and found nothing? Which means he didn't cheat, which means he had no reason to strike the victim. What? Well? Oh, what the fuck was that? Shit. What? What was that just now? I- I sensed something. Something wrong, Mr. Justice? No, nothing, your, your honor. What to do? Should I press her a little harder? Yeah. <laughs> Good explaining. Lots of explaining. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Okay, Pre let's press harder. Miss O'Reilly, you're hiding something. What? What are you talking about? Y y uh, m m me? Quick fingers O'Reilly? <laughs> hiding something? The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have one question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. 
I, I, I did see it. Honest. I, I, I saw it when right hit him. <laughs> Apollo just is tripping out! With my own eyes, I saw it! What's this weird vibe I'm getting? That witness, for instance, Miss O'Reilly. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? This is a flashback, by the way, to last, um, last part. <laughs> Touching her neck, was it? Oh, fuck! Oh my god! It's Illuminati! <laughs> Whoa! What's going on? What the fuck? <laughs> the sensation! It's coming into focus! There, that twitch, it's so clear! It's like I could perceive her habit like I couldn't before! Gotcha! Gotcha! Oh, fuck. Miss O'Reilly, perhaps you were unaware of this yourself. Uh, un unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. My, my, my neck? So, so what? What indeed, Justice? I hadn't noticed anything of the sort. When she says that part of the testimony, she's subconsciously recalling something. Her body reacts to the memory and she touches her neck. I'm sure of it. A memory? Would someone care to explain what he's babbling about? And this is highly unusual, but let's ask the defense. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us? Her habit is scratching her neck whenever she talks about the moment of the crime. So, what would remind her the most of the moment of the crime? Miss O'Reilly, when you recall the crime that night, you scratch your neck. I've noticed it happens when you think about the moment of the crime. Oh my god, this is, they've said the same thing like fucking four times. <laughs> there must be some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an in, 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 inerasable impression on your neck is this. Um... I'm gonna guess she got hit with the fucking bottle. What was the cause of death, actually? Hold on. Single blow to the forehead. Hmm. Wow, trippy the colors, yeah. Uh, is the battery icon how long your sub is? Well, <laughs> the battery icon starts full when you've subscribed for one month, and then it slowly goes down to nothing by the time you've been subscribed but for one year. Okay. I'm gonna... Wait, we don't have anything else, right? Yeah, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Whenever she talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. And what reminds us more of that moment than this bottle? The murder weapon. But, something doesn't fit. If you were the, uh, if you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? Bye, Slayer! Thanks for stopping by. What's he talking about now? It was Mr. Smith, the victim, who was hit. Not you. Uh, um... This is a cross-examination, not a cross-wild conjecture. The, the witnesses' habits? They're completely irrelevant. Justice, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain later. Oh, I'll explain later. Just trust me. Uh, now's our only chance to break her. Miss O'Reilly, please testify in detail about the moment of the crime. The very moment. As you can see, she's almost drained me of my life force. <laughs> almost. Almost. Ten months. Oh, it's a nine-month badge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the next one is one year, so it'll be fully empty. <laughs> Oh, she fucking went back to- I have to do this fucking terrible Russian accent now. Nyet, nyet. I'm knowing nothing. 
Um, we know you're not Russian. The witness will testify, please, now. Bah, fine! He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. Is this the same testimony? Oh shit, yeah. You are almost at one year. <laughs> one more month. <laughs> Holy fuck. Um... Okay, let's press this statement. We do, because we do, this is the one we just pressed, because there was one where she was touching her neck. Um, he's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. I think I already know what I have to do here, but I'm gonna press it anyway to see what her, um, reaction is. You seem uneasy. You try sitting up here. Her eyes are darting all over the place. I must be getting warm. Tell me, after the crime, what was the defendant like? Uh, well, he must have been stunned by the weight of his crime. He sat in a daze at the table, until the cops came. Intriguing. I believe you've gotten all the testimony you're going to get out of this witness. Hello, Great Newtons! Um, I think the only thing you've really missed is the fact that... Um... Oh, wait, sorry, okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me just finish this... this line of talking here. Um, so what do you think about her testimony? I'll tell you what I think. Her testimony is... Hold on. Okay, so... <laughs> Since the game started, uh, a Russian witness is no longer Russian. She's not actually Russian. Her name is, uh, Olga Quick Fingers. Is it Quick Fingers? <laughs> it's something really dumb! Olga Quick Fingers oh really? Um, and she's a person who does stuff, and she was hired to cheat, or to disguise, put a card into Phoenix Wright's, uh, jacket so that they could be like, you cheated, and then ruin his credibility for the past seven years. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically what has happened so far. Oh, and Apollo Justice realized he could see, he tripped out and realized he could super hyper-focus on the fact that she was scratching her neck and lying about something. Um, so yeah, that was a thing. He perceived through time... and space. <laughs> it was foretold, yes! In last, um, la end of last stream. Um... Testimony is flawed, I think. I'm gonna say flawed. It's basically bogus. It contradicts the evidence. Wh what's that? Well, show us this evidence, Mr. Justice. This evidence that you claim contradicts the testimony. She didn't let him out of her sight until the cops got there. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, if you guys remember from last uh, stream, uh, there was no service in the basement and he had to leave to go call the cops from the restaurant's first floor. So here we go. I know there's some evidence that contradicts that. It's this. Take that! <laughs> Miss O'Reilly, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. Uh... And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Ah! So, explain how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely. Ah! Oh, damn. Oh, she didn't catch her food this time. The man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. What a waste of food, yeah. Showdown time. You 
dirty cheat. Check his pockets now. It's gone. The card's gone. You lose. Ah! Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right, and he hit me. This music's pretty fucking sweet. You! Some master of cheating you turned out to be. Ah! Eek! <laughs> when I came to... The victim was already dead. Is that it? That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Hmm. Well, where does this leave us? <laughs> Madness! This is madness! I'm dreaming! It must have been me who was hit with a bottle, and I'm imagining all of this! It appears our prosecution is at his wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? M mr Gavin, sir? I believe that, as the defense in this case, we are compelled to call Miss O'Reilly a big, fat liar. Wh what? Three were in that room the night of the murder. The defendant, victim, and her. And she has a motive. A motive? Her plot foiled. The witness got into an argument with her client, Mr. Smith. And the denouncement of that argument was murder. Er... Denouement? What is that? What? What does that word mean? The outcome of that argument was murder. Okay. I'm assuming. Serendipity sink. Day Newmon. Newmont? I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard that word. Okay. <laughs> what? I didn't. I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. Uh, the final part of a play, movie, or narrative in which the stands, strands of the plot are drawn together and matters are explained or resolved. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> Papa! What tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. Fucking Phoenix Wright! <laughs> Fucking poetry bitch over here. So tangled we catch ourselves in the process. M Mr. Wright? Such a hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Christoph Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Right. Like Mr. Wright was saying before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder. And the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used. A fourth person. Ha! <laughs> this theory again. Your fourth person doesn't exist. Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to court. Here. Where there's no escape, and no san no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The, the real criminal? And we're in luck. A clue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. I think I know what he's- okay. Wh what? Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about? I do. Does anyone else know what I'm talking about? Or what he's talking about? Yeah, they mentioned it about a million times last, uh, last stream. Um, sorry. Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color on the backs of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game were red. Yet, there is one person here, in our court, who thought those cards were blue. Like the blue flames. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo, think you can figure out who it was? Uh, it, it's, it's not me, I swear! Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? 
Does anyone know the answer to this? I mean, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not like there's much choice. Also, it automatically put me onto his profile. So, here we go. Let's, let's blow Apollo's mind again. As I expected. Your eyes and ears are as sharp as your hair. <laughs> Wink and finger guns. Uh, I, I was right? Christoph Gavin, you were the fourth person that night. But, 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 of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue. The ones on the floor or the table. But... But look, you can see the colors in this photo. Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game in the purest sense, a competition, your honor. Uh, a competition. Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Well, Kristoff? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, is something the matter? Hmm? No, no, nothing. Excuse me, it was just so... sudden. Right. You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff? You know even I'd never take a joke this far. This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? I assure you, I'm quite sane. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There is a possibility, after all. They may have met that night, before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the court. The defense would like to request no such thing. Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening before the game of poker be related? Oh, fuck. I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss O'Reilly... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He is the defense, not you. Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh. Okay. Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Um, y yes? <laughs> y yeah? Uh, this was Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along. And I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. It too, Justice? You would betray me, your teacher? I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Very well. The defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. Appetite before murder! That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in the photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was knocked out cold and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another mo phone call. To Defense Attorney Gavin. Mr. Gavin, you were at the Borscht Bowl Club the night of the murder? I dine with him rather frequently. And he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder? 
and quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. S sir He's lying, and you're going to expose him. Uh, I uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright, this can't end well. Why can't I have a normal trial? Sweating bullets over there. That evening, Kristoff and I had dinner. We sat at the table in the photograph. What'd you eat? <laughs> Borscht? You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes, he dines with me at the Borscht Bowl Club quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot. As usual. Usual? I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see. Where Mr. Smith was sitting. So the plates and such on the table were from your dinner? Indeed. The remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left. After that... Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Kristoff left. Five minutes? So, the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time? That would have been a fateful encounter, to be sure. Hee hee hee! Oh, Mr. Wright! What was it you said? Kristoff, Gavin, and Shady Smith may have met? I believe I did say that. Here I was all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear they just passed in the hall. Hmm. That does seem a little weak as a pretense for murder. Oh, it would be, if that was all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? I need a drink of water. Um, when the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. Hold it! Um, about this failed trap. This is the same trap that Miss Olga O'Reilly mentioned? The plan was simple, elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would pull out the card, or uh, the planted card, and the trap would snap shut. You swapped the cards. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Yes, a harmless prank, in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted? Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card. Before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice! The murder weapon? Empty bottle of wine. Yep. I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm. A battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. That sounds like terrific drama. A card inside the murder weapon? That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves this battle of wits. Can I examine this right now? No, because it's not, like, open. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, there's nothing else I can examine right now. I'm sure it'll prompt me after... Um, okay. Please revise your testimony with this new information. 
Uh, I discovered during of the tra ah, I discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. Um, maybe I should check it now. Oh yeah. The bottle is completely empty. Okay. Yep, it's not in there. What happened? <laughs> Objection! Where'd it go? Um, Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes. I've examined the bottle, and I don't see any card in here. Hmm? No? Hmm. What? Mr. Wright? Surely, hmm, isn't all you have to say for yourself. I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person, sixth person could have helped. But Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle. There was nothing. So what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the card just disappear? Words are hard. In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in that ring. Go for the KO. Ugh, why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? Was that the end of the questioning? Okay. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. Hold on, let's press this. You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down there in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor that at that time? Not a soul. It was the middle of the night, after all. So there, in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave the injured waitress alone. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. Wait. He had a hat on, though. Okay. Hold, hold on. Which one of those do I present? <laughs> Okay. Uh, when you returned, the victim was already... dead, yes. I'll admit, I was a little startled when I walked in. A, a little. He was bleeding from his forehead, after all. I, I guess I'd be startled too if I walked in on a scene like that. During investigation. Okay, yeah, this one then. I think. I think this one. Objection! There we go. Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes. Take a look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. On the on the crimes of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Hmm. Good point. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Uh, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Hmm? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like this photograph. And 
I picked his hat up off the floor and I put it on his head. What? What? Why'd you do a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry, but that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Miss O really didn't see it? It being the victim's, uh, his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, uh, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? <clears throat> Pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. Hey, he he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well. You certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Huh? When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. Uh, a, a reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night, recall that I spoke with Defense Attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. <laughs> oh fuck. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him, hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china plate? Pate? 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 <laughs> it, it wasn't you, was it? Me? Please, the cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Bone china pl plate? Bone china plate? Uh, a kind of porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and not plate, but pate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm. The court appreciates the defendant's dis discretion in not indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bowl Club? Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this bone china pate? Oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Oh, fuck. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Mm, it's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order, Mr. Payne! Y yes your honor! I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney Gavin's testimony? Huh? Uh, uh, <coughs> well, I, as the prosecutor, I... Uh... Very well, we'll break for ten minutes. After which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, your honor. Very well, this will be the final recess for the day. Ugh! April 20th, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. <clears throat> Drink your waters. Okay.
Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Is this- Oh, hey! Huh? What? Hello, sir! Please pick a card! What? What's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you've chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace. Where do I remember that card from? Oh, fuck. Um... Mr. Smith's hand has three aces, and Mr. Wright's two. It is five aces in all. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. The missing fifth ace. Wait. This blotch of red, is- is this blood? Oh, fuck. You have your trump card. Now it's time to cut the deck and draw. The truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth? I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Bloody ace added to the court record. Still 420. Okay. Hold on, I want to see if it updated. No, Tracy's still not in here. Did I just... Okay. <laughs> did he mention her name already? Hmm. Did I mention her name previous to now? Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Court will now reconvene. Defense attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes your honor Um, will Mr. Uh, uh, the witness state his name and occupation. Is this farce necessary, your honor? Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we must have made, or we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith is bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. Objection! Papa! Oh shit! We got the Phoenix Wright theme. I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. M Mr. Wright! What do you think you're doing, right? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off except for that one time. That one time, being the instant he was hit. Oh. When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to be at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime. In other words, you'd have to be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Apollo. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? what Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. <sighs> Finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? 
That fateful night. The rage I sensed in that man the night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and right, holding the bottle in his hand. I sensed that it was not, uh... I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. So, you witnessed the murder? For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh! Mr. Wright. The defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. The rage I sensed in that man the night troubled me, so I returned to the club. That man? You mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then, you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Hold it! The little window? You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The Black Marketeers used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes, what if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match, bad form to say the least. Hmm. So far, everything he's saying makes sense. It must have been right after the murder took place. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout justice. Ugh. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. Ah, uh, there he is. The coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you'd change too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Uh, the victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. By photo, do you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head. When he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright, holding the bottle in his hand. Those were the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes. As far as I saw, at least. And then we're back where we started! The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But... Why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. 
There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice. I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. But, but that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ugh, yes. This mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose? Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary? How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. Fifth ace. Right, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Hold on, I didn't actually inspect this yet. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. Oh, is that it? We're gonna look at the fact that it's a red card, too? No, okay. <laughs> The question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Yeah. There's fucking blood on it. It's now or never! The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Hmm. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why'd the killer take the fifth ace? Cause that blood on it! Take that! My reason is, uh, I mean, this. Is that an ace? Why, why it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? What? Now this is insane. Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could, could this be, could this be the missing fifth ace? Uh, in inconceivable. How could you... What are you doing with that card? Um, well, uh, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's, uh, it's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. N no, impossible. Unacceptable. Uh, the court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? what I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo, and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, the hat fell to the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. R regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What? what are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. The, this is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Objection. Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. What? What? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. Thank you, base conjecture. <laughs> Thanks, Phoenix Daddy. Um, sorry, Phoenix Papa. Papa Phoenix. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? M yes? Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. Oh, fuck. 
tripping out again. We're tripping out again. <laughs> the murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with the scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? He wouldn't be able to see anything over here, right? Is it the killer? Take that! Yes. Well, for one- no, oh, I think. Shit. <laughs> well, for one thing, the killer's in the wrong place. I think. You- you think? This doesn't show me enough details. I don't have a picture of the- This chair is facing this way. This is the ki- this is... Okay, I don't- let's- let's see. Let's see. Mr. Justice, your job here is not to think but to know. Ugh, just looking at you reminds me of the old days. Not the good old days, per se. Oh, I fucked up. Okay. What is the answer to that? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? I mean, I'm- okay, I'm gonna go with the- the victim next, I guess. I'm not quite sure what this question is asking. Because, I mean, the card- the bloody card, it's- the victim- it would have been on the floor. But Phoenix disposed of it by him. Okay. <laughs> well, isn't the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was stuck on, struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think any blood would have fallen behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Yeah, but Phoenix said it. Oh, okay. Ugh. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So, what does this mean? Like, is- did, are they talking about the bottle got- No, the bottle didn't get smashed because it's still whole. The Phoenix says he put it- Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue. Um, why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were, we're sitting in swivel chairs. S swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Oh. Okay. And the chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. The 
so we have to assure the victim's ch uh, assume the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which which way was this? Which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing a scene in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now that the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. Hold on, maybe this photo makes more sense now. It's not this one I'm thinking of, it's this one. No, the chair's facing away! Okay. I feel like this is part of it. Hold on. We now know the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder, but... This creates another significant contradiction. No, again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? I think it's the killers this time. Um, if the victim was facing away. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it would be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of the game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. What? What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was stuck here while he was struck here while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? What? But. There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry, let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing towards the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? Inside the fucking wall! Right? Unless it's like a secret passage. The killer had to be standing well, uh, here. You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Uh, oh, oh, okay, N no. I guess that's not it. I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Ha! It's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there. What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Cavan? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ugh, your honor. What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Hmm. Yes, I, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here, which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it had to have been shown here. Had to have been as shown here up against the window. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? 
what is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we've found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang! Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching. Um, it's a logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, and the second witness? It's the second witness. Okay. Take that! Can't fucking see in the window now. Um, how about this cupboard? Are we okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Ah! That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Oh? Is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? Ugh. Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was. Well, the window to that room was blocked by a cover. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court. Exactly. Where did you witness the crime scene from? Ugh. Ugh. Excuse me, your honor. Order. This is a court of law and I will have order. We we just now received word from the investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, your honor. Oh? And what did they find? Well, your honor... It turns out there is a secret passage behind it. I fucking knew it. What? Uh, yes. I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal going-ons. Never knowing you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked and the victim's hat was only off of his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin? Come on, say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what's really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. There he crouched, hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard, holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then, the chance came, and he took it. Ugh! What? Why'd you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga O'Reilly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Ms. Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then, our killer stepped out from the secret passageway and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look, and bam! After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. Oh.
That's his reaction? Ugh. <laughs> Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry to have seen this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne. Yeah? I, 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 <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Ah! Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately. Objection! Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low grade parlor trick. <clears throat> I I excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Uh, illegal evidence? Objection! Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking? How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Uh, actually, yeah. The fingerprints on the bottle were, um, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court, in this case, demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with, that bo with the bottom of the bottle. Well, your honor? Hmm. Uh, see how the caught fish squirms to the last... Well... Apollo? N yes Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Um... Yeah! Just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... Ugh. Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um... Is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. How about you just say the answer in plain words? That's, that's, uh, Papa Phoenix. Because he was grabbing it out of here? Because he works here? Like, what? Because he works at the Borscht Club? <laughs> Papa Phoenix. <laughs> Papa Phoenix, right. You know, Nick. Okay. I think that's the answer. Well, Mr. Justice, Mr. Gavin said that the court and this case demand an explanation. Don't worry, justice won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? Oh, I have to present. There we go. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor? Yes. Now reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah! See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. 
with your fingers upside down. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He's getting wasted. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed. But then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Yeah, juice in quotes. Order, order, order. What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic, tactic of misdirection. What? What? Bitch, I just proved everything. You claim that I switched the bottle. Where is your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought. More baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Okay. Yeah, literally, because it's, it's not the one with the card in it. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall that I requested an additional investigation? Ah, uh, yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Hmm. What, are you going to dust that for fingerprints, too? I would be surprised if any were on that but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake. True. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo. Y yes Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But- but why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. Hey, look at that. <gasps> There's something inside the bottle! Oh, fuck. What? What's this? The, that card, it can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Uh, Miss Olga O'Reilly? Yes, our little swindling Dvochka. That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone. The trap failed. Wh wait this isn't... You're, not, you're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony? And I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. Five of hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my god. Hello, unessential. Welcome. We just we just finished this case of Ace Attorney. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> Thank you. Um that's all, folks. Death animation. Is is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? Hmm. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine.
Um, doing okay playing lots of games, can't go out because of coronavirus. Yep, same. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um... I'm enjoying- I've- I haven't played through Apollo Justice, uh, since it first came out, so now I'm doing- This is basically my second playthrough. I didn't like it very much the first time. I'm hoping I will enjoy it more this time. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Nice. Um... You have, like, a custom controller for that, right? Or something? Is that what I'm thinking of? Or you have, like, a really cool controller for that? Um. I played everything up to Apollo Justice. I have it, but never played it. It's it's an interesting game. I hated it when I first played it, because I was really upset. <laughs> um, about it. But, you know what? This We just finished, this is the end of the trial, or, like, the tutorial case. So I'm excited to, to I don't remember anything from this game. Um, so I'm really excited to replay it and hopefully with a fresh new perspective after having played all of the other games after this. Um. I have an arcade stick for fighting games and I have a gigantic Bishi Bashi controller for Bishi Bashi. Oh, interesting. Sweet. Um, okay. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little... Tet a tet, right. This this is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? I believe this time we finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest right now. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. An odd profession to be sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange for a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. Also a fucking murderer! I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who could tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me? A dark time is coming for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own court system. We have to set it up right. Or, we have to set it right. Mr. Wright. Our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not guilty! Woo! Court is adjourned. Still 420. Thanks, Apollo. You came through just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Ga- the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too today, didn't you? Your ability? Ability? Yes, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means that weird time I was tripping out. <laughs> I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? What? What was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer for that question yourself. The answer, right. Today was full of questions without answers, most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have to commit murder? 
Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait, y you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Huh? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury. You testified. You said that locket was yours. I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. There's no titty locks in this game. Only creepy Apollo eye. <laughs> Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside of it? That's super weird. Sometimes the strangest path to the tr or sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for the Gavin Law Offices after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes? How about coming to work for me? Huh? You mean at the Wright & Co. Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... you're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago? That legendary trial? And at the middle of it all was one man, Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left the law for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Forged evidence? What- what are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. Naughty magician's trick. Hmm. One piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. Um, I think it's the card. I think it's this one. Take that! You meant- you mean this, don't you? I got this from your, uh, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Oh my gosh. Essential! Th unessential! <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for subbing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, thank you so much for the raid before. What trial are you talking about? We don't know yet. We are still finding out. Maybe we will find out by the end of the game. Um, Why Phoenix left. The law. Subpipe! Subpipe! <laughs> um, why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place? Luckily for us. The court can't accept this evidence! It's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene, the real killer. My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then you really... Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But, but you can't do something like that and you call yourself an attorney. Oh, sorry. But you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor's true. Seven years ago? None of that matters much now, does it? <gasps> no oh. Ah! Phoenix! Why you do this? I... I punched him. 
It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. Drop in, if you like. Mr. Wright! Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling. Take that! Next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. That is such a long first case. Yes, it fucking was. It was like four hours. <laughs> um, how many more times is Phoenix gonna be accused of a crime in this game? Because I feel like the last game, it was like three times. Um, I think Maya gets accused of a crime way more than Phoenix does. Um, let's save state this. You just ruined an innocent man's life. No, he was the- he was the killer! He was the killer! He was still the killer. It's just what Phoenix did was a little bit underhanded. Because he knew. Save data, yeah. So he's a cop. Turnabout corner. Okay, I'm actually gonna save state here instead. And that is the end of today's first case. This is now, we're gonna be on, I, I think there's four episodes. This, so, um, I was talking to Great Newtons, who hasn't finished this game, who was like, I think the reason I didn't finish it is because all the cases are extremely fucking long. <laughs> um, dirty, dirty lawyer, yeah. He, well, he didn't... It is kind of illegal evidence. He didn't... He, I mean, it was forged, but also, theoretically, that did exist. He didn't register it as an evidence. I didn't finish it because the first case was extremely long, and I bounced off when the second case started to drag. Uh... Um... I'm, I'm just explaining what the fuck happened in the game. Shut up. <laughs> okay.